So I'm with uh, Carl G7 AFT from Yesu. Carl, great to talk to you. Thanks yep. for uh, seeing us. So the latest thing from Yesu then, we're obviously familiar with the DR1 yep. X repeater. Um, what's new with the DR2? What can, we, what, what can we expect from this box? OK, so the DR2 is quite different from the DR1. It has two receivers, so one can be used for the, the normal users and another receiver and transmitter can be used for control purposes or for emergency transmit channel. Okay, well. so is that is that from the point of view people can get in and do you, do you send like tones to it or is there software you run on the remote radio and then access it remotely? Okay, so there's a, a system where you can basically pair one of our new handsets, our new handhelds, or the a firmware updated existing radio and it can be paired with the repeater so that's really for the repeater keeper to control his repeater okay so you send commands via the yeah. via the hand okay fantastic yes yeah. yeah. so what other features can this uh, this radio do i mean there, there was a rumor about it not supporting wires x i think that's that's been squashed the, the new yes. repeater will support wires x if they want it to yes you can use wires x with the dr2 but you wouldn't really want to use it for that you would probably still continue to use a dr1 right the main difference with the DR2 is you really use it when you want a private network of repeaters. Perhaps you want to have a, uh, a number of repeaters over perhaps an area of the land which is sort of quite hilly or something like that. So what you can do is you can install a network card into the DR2 repeater called the LAN 01A and it's a small microcontroller. It's got a small version of Linux running on there. It's got a little Ethernet card in there as well you can set a TCP IP address onto it and then you basically do that for each of the repeaters in your network. You then set up a normal TCP IP uh, routed network that covers the large area that you want to cover. So it doesn't need to use the internet at all, it could be a private network, yeah. a, a, a microwave link between the microwave sites. Microwave link, um, perhaps a lease line or some other form of TCP IP network. So no internet is required. If you want, you could use the internet with a VPN or something, but it's not required. Okay, yeah. so you, I mean, for example here, you've got this running literally two repeaters side by side, yeah. pretty much running on a, on, a, on a private LAN, and they work just as happily, so people don't need to expend money on the expensive internet connections at sites if they don't want it or if they don't need it. Exactly. And of course, you may find, like in this demonstration example, we have a two meter repeater and a 70 centimeter repeater and they may even be in the same rack where you may want to then link the two repeaters and you can do that with this new system. Okay and uh, so how do we link the repeaters together? How do we know where you want to send the traffic to? I mean before we might with the DR1 and the, yeah. the WireZX we may have just connected to a particular um, room or a reflector or whatever yeah. and we'd have gone out on the internet. How do, we, how do we tell the new system how that works? Right okay so there's a new function uh, we like to call this System Fusion 2 but basically there's a new function which is available as standard on the FT70 and it's available as a firmware upgrade for the FT1, FT2, FTE M100 and 400 and basically it lets you set what's called a digital group ID right. and it's this that allows you to decide which repeater you're accessing and which repeater you're coming out from. And these are IDs, are they, are they numeric or am I, am I literally programming like for example in, in London ours would be GB3XP, yeah. would we have to program GB3XP into the radio yeah. or we, we have a, a numeric code? No, so you have a numeric code. So okay. when the repeater group set up their network of repeaters, they will assign a digital group ID to each repeater. You can kind of liken it to a CTCSS tone on analog. Okay. So the repeater group, uh, group keeper might set, um, say, one repeater to number one, another repeater to number two, another repeater to number three. And so if you're communicating with that local repeater, you would then set your digital group ID to the same ID as the repeater. Okay. Now, some of the repeaters, obviously, at the moment, some of the fusion networks are quite big. Some of the, the, the rooms are, are particularly huge. I know the America's Link one often has several hundred people on it. The yeah. CQ UK, 50 or 60 odd people on it. Um, is there a limit with the, um, with the DR2 and the amount of rooms you can have, or, or is it this sort of infinite? Okay, so basically the digital group ID can be set from number one to number 99. Right. So basically limits the amount of repeaters on a single network to 100 repeaters. But bearing in mind that is on a single private network. Mm. Of course you can have many private networks across the world. Yeah. So of course in, in reality you're limited to, you know, there is no limit as such. And in theory people are joining those networks with other networks and is that, is that something that you're seeing happening? Would you have... Um, say for example one network of 100 repeaters 
being able to connect to another network of 100 repeaters or is that beyond the realms of possibility? At, at, at the moment, moment until at the moment it's not it's right. basically set between 1 and 99 because yep. that's what you do on your handset yep. you set the appropriate number that the repeater keeper has told you to use to access your yep. repeater and from the point of view of accessing it I'm, I'm presuming all the firmware updates are of course free on the website are yes. they yes okay. they are and programming it I mean do we need special software or is it literally you can program it from the radio quite simply on the front panel okay so on all of the radios you basically hold a single button down and then basically you just turn the dial and you set the DG ID to whatever you want. The digital group IDs are not stored in memory because the idea is you're meant to be able to change them quickly and easily as you okay. need to um, select the different repeater groups. That so you simplifying want. the use then yes. for the user, that's fantastic yes. then, fantastic. Okay, well thank you very much for that. Is there anything else you can tell us about this radio in the, in the, in the short term while we know it? Yes, yeah, so another thing I'd like to say is, is how you basically now we've got our network of DR2s, is how the user will actually then determine which repeaters he's coming out of. Okay. So the way he does it is the, the repeater group will then basically set up a little group which they will assign a number, let's say number 10. They will then assign the repeaters in that group, let's say repeater number 1, number 2, number 3. When the user then sets his digital group ID to number 10, he will come out of repeater one, repeater two, and number three. Okay. And also, they have the ability to set more than one group. So if he sets another group of, say, number 40, which is repeater number one and number two, and the user sets his ID to number 40, he will come out of repeater one and repeater two. Okay, so in theory, you could come out of one other repeater on a network of 100 repeaters, yes. or 10 of them, or 100 of them, yes. if, if that was what you desired to do. Yes. And from the point of view of programming this into the repeater, is this done on the front panel of the repeater? We're running a server, um, like we do similarly with the WiseX software. Are we running a server for this as well? Okay, so one of the main differences between the DR1 and the DR2 is that there is no extra PC required. Right. So, as I said earlier, there's a LAN 01A um, network card, yeah. which also includes a small Linux computer on it. The, you set it up initially with an IP address. Once that's set up, all of your digital groups are set up on the front panel of the repeater. Okay, so in theory, because it's got a LAN card in it, if you were doing this, say for example, on the public internet, we had our repeater a, uh, a, a site on, on the top of a hill somewhere that wasn't as easily accessible. Our repeater, for example, is on the top of a hospital. Um, the repeater keeper, as well as via his radio, could he get into it remotely if it was um, it had the right routing through for his um, through his firewall? At the moment, with the revision of the software at the moment, you have to control it either from a remote radio or from the front panel. Right, OK. Yeah. Well, that's something that maybe, maybe might come in the future. We don't know. Yeah. OK. Well, thank you very much for that. I really appreciate your time. And um, if people want to find out more about this repeater, just go to the Yesu website, yeah. which is yesu.com. Uh, yesu.com or yesu.co.uk. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate that.